anywhere or is there any uh, specific uh, recommendation that a particular type of dam should be suitable at a particular place so the choice of the type of dam most suitable for a given site actually depends on several parameters look at the topography for example if you take the topo topography the cross section of the river at the site whether it is a narrow gorge or a wide valley is a basic parameter to decide the type of the dam so this figure provides you that you have a, a wide valley in between two hills which are uh, connected together in between there is a small valley this valley may be conveniently used for constructing a, a dam so a narrow v shaped valley uh, may be uh, uh, used to construct an arch dam in between these two the spillway and the length to the height ratio is less than 5 you have a u shaped valley v shaped and u shaped so this is the u shaped valley so this u shaped valley suggests a gravity dam provided foundations are suitable otherwise you have to go for the earth dam earth dam as we discussed can be constructed and most suitable and most economical but the limitations is that it it, it cannot be constructed to a higher heights maybe to the height of about 45 50 meters only this will be able to be constructed the second condition is geology and the foundation condition which may be affecting the selection of type of dam sound rock if it is there uh, you can construct any type of dam you can construct any type of dam fine sand or a clay foundation suggests only earth dams and gravity dams and rock pool dams are not suitable on the clay foundation silt and fine sands involve the settlement of problems and are not suitable for the rock fill dams then what is the material available for construction what type of dam we are constructing what type of material is available this is also another parameter because it is all a big project of thousands of crores of rupees always as a civil engineer we try to plan to see that it is economical as economical as possible so the cost of construction depends on the availability of material at the site and the transportation of that material also lead and lift charges as we have been indicating so availability of sand gravel and crushed stone suggests to, to go for a concrete gravity dam while if you have the availability of uh, coarse and fine grain sand uh, we may prefer the earth dams we may prefer the earth dams third uh, parameter based on which a type of dam can be selected is spillway size and location availability of suitable site for the safe disposal of flood water is very very important if a dam is constructed for a specific uh, capacity more floods if they are entering into the dam how to safeguard this dam is very important parameter so to looking at the safety of the dam spillway is mandatory that is why spillway is called safety wall for a dam safety wall for a dam so if the flood waters can be passed through the overflow sections of the dam gravity dam may be constructed earth dams are suggested with the availability of alternate site for the disposal of flood water so at whenever you are going for earth dam you should have a, a suitable location for disposing this flood water by means of uh, using a spillway and a site also must be suitable site also must be available then another parameter is length to height ratio the length to height ratio is less than 5 suggests arch dam and if the value is greater than 7 it will suggest to go for a gravity dam or earth dam environmental considerations also control the choice of the type of the dam its dimension location of spillway and how much area is getting submerged whether you have any recreation that can be created so all these are the parameters which are to be looked into under environmental considerations another biggest parameter that we should verify is about 
the earthquake zones. So for the dams capable of resisting the earthquake force, earth and concrete gravity dams are the best suited. Then overall cost, how much is the fund available? Sometimes inaccessibility of the sites, restrictions imposed by the protection works and the river diversion influence the selection of the site also. In some cases, costly protection works may be required. So overall cost of the dam depends on the cost of construction, operation and maintenance also. So in a dam, initial cost is less, but maintenance cost is very high. In a gravity dam, initial cost is high, but the maintenance cost is less. You need to make a balance of all this. So uh, while you are going for selecting a, a particular type of dam, apart from the other parameters of safety, suitable location, type of dam, we need to see what is the cost of the total dam project also. This cost of the project should be as economical as possible. So this cost involves something like the initial cost will be there, operational cost will be there, maintenance cost will be there. We have to see that all these costs together must be as less as possible. If we take gravity dam, initial cost is very high, but the maintenance cost is less. On the other side, if we take earth dam, initial cost is less. Why it is less? Because we'll be making use of the locally available material, earthen material for constructing a dam. So not much of uh, skill labor also may be required for this. So the um, cost of construction of the dam may be less, but the maintenance is so high because there is a problem of seepage through the body of the dam, beneath the uh, body of the dam. This will create a lot of problems and a lot of maintenance is required for the earth dams. Another parameter is width of the roadway to be carried. Whenever a dam is constructed, it is connecting two banks of the either side of the river. So when a river is flowing, you have left bank, you may have right bank, and both these banks can be connected when you are constructing a dam. So the top of the dam may be used as a roadway, as a passage to connect both the, both the uh, banks of the river. So this side, uh, on the left side of the river, there may be so many villages, on the right side of the river, there may be so many villages. It's always good that if a dam is constructed, if the top of this dam may be used as a roadway connecting both, a lot of communication uh, takes place, the transportation facility is created indirectly. So if wide highways are to be carried on the top of the dam, at dam may be advantages because at the dam, the top width of the at dam usually will be higher compared to that of uh, concrete dams. If moderate width of the road of about six to eight meters is carried on the top of the dam, a gravity dam may be constructed. If smaller width roads, maybe up to six meters are to be carried, arch dam also may be thought of because arch dam, the top width would be very less. As we have seen, the thickness of the arch dam also would be very less because the total water pressure which is coming into the arch dam would be transferred and it would be resisted by both the, the, the arch action as well as bending, thrust and bending moment. Then another uh, governing factor is life of the dam. All types except the timber dams are suitable for dams of permanent nature. Timber dams are usually constructed for a very temporary purpose, though they are very economical. Other considerations such as diverting the stream flow during the construction. This is another a big subject. During the construction, how to divert the flow from the river? Because you cannot construct when there is no when there is no water. So such type of period may be very, very less. So if you start constructing a dam, we expect that the construction process is continuous and see that the gestation period for the reservoir project should be as minimal as possible. So during the uh, monsoon period, also when the water is flowing, then we should have certain mechanism to see that the water is, the stream is diverted and dam is constructed. Once the dam is constructed, the regular stream flows. Similarly, availability of labor, nowadays it has become a, uh, a very big problem. Earlier, people used to depend more uh, on construction uh, works. So that is how uh, we, particularly for the developing countries like India, the skilled manpower, there was no depth of uh, skilled manpower in terms of uh, uh, construction activity. But what is happening now is that, you no. Know, uh, men and machinery, the machinery is replacing um, the men. This is one situation. It is a good sign. Uh, the advantage with this would be that you'll be able to construct uh, at a faster pace. You'll be able to construct with, uh, at a faster uh, pace. At the same time, since the opportunities are becoming less or 
the general development growth of the country economic growth of the country also is leading to the people to study to move to a higher levels etc rather than working as a simple labor so skill or unskilled and uh, labor and equipment is another consideration we need to carry the equipment to the site place so the accessibility to the site also is another important parameter and uh, limitations of the outlet works and life of dam also play an important role in the selection of type of dam if you construct a dam and you find that the life of the dam is very very less of the art of 30 40 years probably uh, engineers do not prefer to go for such type of locations for constructing a dam instead they look for a good location where the life of the dam could be more in, in terms of uh, servicing in some providing service to the people the second category is the selection of suitable site for a dam if you are constructing a dam where exactly is to be constructed okay. we know uh, very clearly that it should be constructed across a river or it should be constructed across a stream that is fine but along that stream which location is preferred for constructing a dam so the selection of dam site for construction for constructing a dam should be governed by various factors like foundation topography size location of the dam and reservoir site how a reservoir can be provided what what would be the total surface area of the reservoir how much storage capacity would be there and how much area is getting submerged in the upstream side because of the construction of this reservoir and whether you have a good location for uh, spillway or not and what type of material uh, are used for this dam and what are the various other environmental factors communication and finally the overall economy is to be looked into like let us look at one by one foundations suitable foundation must be available this is uh, a well accepted fact if the foundation is not good what will happen if the foundation is not good naturally the dam may fail cracks may appear in the dam life of the dam may come down reservoir may not may not function to its full capacity and these are the problems so foundation must be good so suitable foundation must be available the foundation at the site should be free from fault zones open packets are giants if walls are there like quite natural uh, that there may be a possibility in due course of time after constructing the dam differential settlement may take place if the differential settlement takes place a lot of cracks will be there for the dam the dam life may be reduced then existence of sandstone or shales lead to the slipping during excavation this is another problem so you need to be careful about the foundation condition gravity dams require hard rock foundation while arch dam need strong sides of the guard to resist this arch action while an earth dam can be designed and constructed on any type of foundation concrete dams require relatively stronger foundation why uh, concrete dam require stronger foundation is usually concrete dam will be constructed with a mass concrete it is a mass concrete structure the height may be very high so huge volume of the material will be rested on the foundations so naturally the weight unit weight of concrete is more so more weight of the dam will be there so sulfate of the dam will be more so if this is sulfate of more sulfate of the dam is resting on a foundation which is weak so it will lead to the failure of the dam foundations can be improved to some extent by taking suitable steps for foundation treatment so wherever there is a good location for constructing a dam and there may be a problem at particular location about the foundation with all the advent of technology you will be able to uh, treat this foundation also topography the cross section of the river at the dam site should have a narrow gauge to have reduced the length of the dam you can see here you can see in the picture if this length is, is less naturally you will be able to provide lesser length of the dam it becomes economical it becomes economical a narrow gauge with hard rock foundation requires a gravity dam or a arch dam while a wide valley with foundations of soil material to a considerable depth indicates at the dam this is how type of dam at a suitable location may be selected then size and location of the dam is another consideration the dam should be easily accessible the dam site is somewhere but you are not able to access it it's of no use because most of the time the catchment or the stream flow of river may be through the hills hillocks or Uh, maybe through the forest area you need to identify a good accessible location if you are not able to reach there how the construction can be taken up so that it can be economically connected to the important towns and cities for economy the length of the dam should be 
small as possible and for a given height it should store the maximum volume of water if the volume of water that is getting stored in a reservoir is more and more actually all the water can be used for various purposes so the total cost of the project will come down because you are trying to store more volume of water the general bed level at the dam side should preferably be higher than that of the river basin so this also will reduce the height of the dam and we need to be uh, very careful uh, to achieve more and more economy um, uh, because uh, the entire uh, river valley uh, project uh, would be a very costly affair and it is something like once it is constructed it will last for about 200 300 years you need to be very careful to see that no it, it is a, as economical as possible at the same time we should not compromise for the safety of the structure also site for the reservoir the leakage loss through the bed of the reservoir should be minimum and we should have very minimum evaporation losses there should not be any problem of more and more sedimentation coming into the dam and the submergence of a very valuable land also should not be there or it should be as minimum as possible so these are all the pa parameters based on which a site for a reservoir can be selected if more and more leakage loss is there in terms of seepage loss after constructing a dam after forming a reservoir more amount of water more volume of water is seeping through and joining the ground water then the purpose is defeated the purpose will be defeated because more water is planned to be stored but the stored water is joining the ground water with this seepage with the seepage another problem is so evaporation so when the reservoir surface is exposed to the atmosphere because of the variation in temperature it is a, a very big problem in many of the reservoirs that uh, the losses would be more and more evaporation losses would be more and more uh, particularly during the summer months there will be no inflow into the reservoir there will be no rainfall the existing water in the reservoir should be uh, judiciously used for drinking water purpose and other important uh, domestic requirements during that period because of the higher temperatures evaporation has to be more so more the evaporation and naturally more wastage of water from the reservoir so this also should be minimal several of course several measures are taken to minimize these evaporation losses by uh, spreading a, a layer on the top surface of the reservoir uh, which is directly exposed to the atmosphere which minimizes the evaporation and so on and uh, you should have minimum sedimentation into the reservoir uh, otherwise life of reservoir becomes uh, very less the reservoir formed by the dam should not involve the submergence of any valuable lands nagarjuna kunda for example if we take nagarjuna sagar reservoir some of the temples will get submerged some of the settlements uh, will get submerged you see that you no know, the valuable land uh, minimum valuable land is submerged whenever a reservoir is formed important uh, parameter in the construction and selection selection of the site is location of the spillway we know spillway is a safety wall for a dam structure necessarily spillway must be constructed with sufficient discharge capacity to safeguard the entire dam portion the remaining dam portion must be safeguarded for which we need to, to provide a, a, a spillway in the in the dam section so this is a very important component in a dam so a suitable site for the spillway should be available in the near vicinity of the dam in case of a concrete gravity dam it may be accommodated in the main dam portion itself as a part of the total dam will be able to provide uh, the spillway but in the case of earth dam it has to be away from the main dam and it has a suitable site should be available for the spillway too so you have a good location for the earth dam but you don't have a good location for spillway better discard the site better discard that location materials for the dam so we we have we have seen several types of dams like concrete gravity dam masonry dam earth dam arch dam for this you know, the material something required is something like locally available earth material in some case some case it is concrete so you need to have uh, gravel you need to have cement you need to have sand etc so all this material required for the construction of the dam should be easily available either locally or in the near vicinity if it is available locally it is fine otherwise it should be very near otherwise the transportation charges will be very very high for economic considerations it should be advantageous if the bulk of the construction material is available <coughs> very close to the dam side 
in case of epidermis the design is so made so as to use locally available earthen material as much as possible the advantage of using locally available earthen material is lead and lift will be less transport cost will be less second is that you don't have to invest much on the local available earthen material so ethanol has become more and more economical another parameter which is to be considered is environmental factors so the area upstream of the dam whenever a dam is constructed that also must be suitable for the requirements of forming a reservoir also during the construction so many labor will be working there so good colonies must be available healthy environment should be available very near to the site where the people can stay there and uh, they will be useful for constructing this dam and the other environmental considerations including the displacement of the local people require that there is minimum damage to the local environment and minimum hardship to the local people otherwise what will happen when a dam is constructed if you ask the people to move away from there they feel unhappy because they may be staying in their village maybe for generations together they may be staying there for generations together and if you simply go there and say that yes i'm constructing a dam your village is going to be completely under submergence you have to move from there so there will be hardship to the people so you need to educate them you need to come close to their minds and hearts saying that if this dam is constructed so many lakhs of people for generations will get the benefit so please uh, uh, try to uh, help them by coming out of this village like that you need to uh, speak to them personally you need to make uh, conduct meetings with them and appraise them in uh, the importance of constructing a dam at their location etc though you give money sometimes people will not accept i don't want money i want to be here only this would be, this would be the general attitude of the people so what you need to do you need to um, uh, consider them consider them saying that yes this can be useful to the public yes i am now sacrificing but for generations people will enjoy the benefits such a mindset should should come to the mind of the people there at times these become the governing factors in selecting the site of the dam most of the time what will happen if the environmental factors are not uh, favorable there will be so many agitations that the uh, dam construction should be stopped and so on so in the meantime if the people if, if the policy makers and executors start constructing a dam without addressing these issues um, there may be uh, legal directions to stop the construction of the dam uh, by the time already huge amount must have been invested in the dam project which goes waste so you need to be careful uh, the policy makers and the executors have a dialogue with all the local people and uh, take their acceptance involve them so that no they will be happy that they are also uh, contributing directly or indirectly to the construction of the dam at their location compensation would be given yes definitely compensation would be given but uh, that is not uh, the end because it is uh, something connected with the sentiment of the people also so they have they may have a lot of attachment to their house they may have a lot of attachment to their village they may have a lot of attachment to their agricultural land so they will not be prepared even if one acre is lost there uh, the, the other location even if the government is ready to give 10 acres their mindset would be that no i don't want 10 acres i want my one acre here only that may be the mindset of the people so what we need to do is that we need to have a better dialogue with them uh, we need to console them saying that this is advantage yes to the nation and you are also becoming a part of it and you are contributing for a positive way etc then probably uh, they will come in line another uh, parameter is the communication the dam site should have rail and road communication to transport the men material and machinery and any other equipment required for the construction of the dam because most of the time you no know, during the rivers uh, streams or rivers when they are flowing through a very hill areas or if they are flowing uh, through the forest areas accessibility becomes a very big problem so we need to have a good uh, road or rail communication very nearby so that the material men can be shifted there and suitable site and communication should be available for the colonies also good colony must be developed there because all the people who are working there from top rank to the bottom rank uh, need to stay there for years together maybe four years five years something like that every year days it used to be much high because of advent of technology and machinery now we are talking about 48 months completion of a big reservoir project 36 months completion of a very big reservoir project nowadays we are talking 
but early days it used to be of the order of 15 years 20 years when the project is started 15 years 20 years it used to be there then overall economy the value of the land prop land and the property submerged in by the proposed dam should be as low as possible otherwise this indirect cost will become more for for constructing a dam construction work labor involved material used for construction of a dam this is all one phase but the other phase is that compensation that is required to be paid so this becomes more and more and uh, we need to see that you know it should be as less as possible so the the cost of compensation should be as less as possible the selected site should be such that it results in overall economy in the construction maintenance and operation of any water resources project you need to be careful in selecting a site you need to be careful in selecting a suitable type of a dam so all this usually will be taken up by the investigation wing of irrigation department there will be three four wings in uh, irrigation department state uh, uh, subject this is a state subject so state irrigation department will be there so this irrigation department will have like um, design wing investigation wing and execution will be taken up so there will be three major wings will be there headed by the engineer in chief that also we try to see in that part also we try to see uh, any questions as of now i'll just i'll try to any questions as of now otherwise i'll try to show you some important uh, things related to the major projects in the state of telangana okay in the state of telangana what are the major irrigation projects we try to see it is it is getting recorded i see it is there it is getting recorded now okay anyone uh, can help me uh, any questions yes no yes no please give in chat box good good okay so we'll try to uh, move to another uh, um, content related to dam reservoir projects in the state of telangana major irrigation projects in the state of telangana actually the irrigation projects are classified based on the extent of irrigated i cut what do you mean by i cut it is the irrigated area okay so the irrigated i cut means it is the total commandable area based on the value of the commandable area the projects are classified like major project medium project minor project major projects the value of the i cut may be of more than 10000 hectares if it is between 2000 to 10000 hectares it is called a medium project and up to 2000 hectares it is called a minor irrigation project major irrigation projects medium irrigation project minor irrigation projects so there will be different uh, wings like this so major medium irrigation projects in the state of telangana with all the new uh, districts is uh, given here uh, two major uh, rivers which are flowing here godavari and krishna river okay so what is this kaleshwaram project
So we have seen about uh, the Kaleshwaram project is the largest lift irrigation project, uh, which is covering or uh, providing the drinking water and the irrigation water to about twenty districts out of thirty-three districts in the state of Telangana. is a huge, is a massive uh, lift irrigation project proposed by the government of Telangana, which has been constructed in a very record time. Which has come to the utilization. Only the difficulty is that no number of lifts are more where you need to use about one thousand nine megawatt capacity pump houses are there to lift the water to various levels. Another project is the Jindi project. So this is the Jindi project. You can see here. So this Jindi project was constructed across the Jindi River, which is a tributary of Krishna River in Jindi village in Nalgonda uh, district. This is another uh, major irrigation project. It was constructed to provide the irrigation facility to an extent of about 12,000 acres in Nalgonda and Nagarkarnool districts. So it is providing benefit to the districts of Nalgonda and Nagarkarnool. Maximum flood discharge is about 9010 cubic. Okay, it is a Dindi tributary of Krishna River, and uh, the catchment area is 3,920 square kilometers with 69 million cubic meters capacity. Kadam Narayan Reddy project is another project. This was taken up in the year 1949. You can see, so the, these projects are constructed way back uh, about 80 years, 100 years back also. So on Kadam River, so Kadam River is uh, attributed to Godavari River in Adilabad district. So this is an integral part of Godavari Valley scheme contemplated by the erstwhile government of Hyderabad to irrigate lands on the north flank of Godavari, and this has been completed in 1958. In those days. 1949 to 1958. Okay, so due to unprecedented floods on 31 8 the dam was breached. Kadam Narayan Reddy project. So this is the Kadam Narayan Reddy project. Okay, and uh, the maximum flood that was observed in this Kadam Narayan Reddy project was uh, about 14,696 cubic. But the flood discharge is only 7,000. So maximum Probable flood that was estimated was 7,000, but 14,696 cubic was uh, was occurred uh, during 1958. Uh, resulted in the breach. So there was a reconstruction and erection of flood gates also was taken up, and that was completed in the year 1969. So it has become a total of 20 year project 1949 to 1969. Then. This is the Gadam Narayan Reddy project. Other project is the Nagarjun Sagar project. So this is a multi-purpose reservoir project, and it is one of the modern temples of independent India, as mentioned by the Honorable uh, the then Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Okay. So the project was inaugurated by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the then Prime Minister of India, on 10th December. 1955, and this has come to operation by 1960. 12 years it took. So this is the Nagarjun Sagar project. So this was located. This is located on the river Krishna, and the scope of the project. If you see, we have left left main canal, right main canal for this. In addition to the irrigation canals, there are feeder canals which feed water to the irrigation tanks. Also, there is Uh, 960 megawatts of power generation from this Nagarjun Sagar project. So, River Krishna is the main source, and the catchment area is about 2.15 lakh square kilometers. Life storage is about 90 uh, TMC of water is stored there, up to 3 to 12 grass storage. Okay, so you have the Dindi project, Kadam Narayan Reddy project, Nagarjun Sagar project, Jan Sagar. Project Indira Pradeshini Jorala project, Rajul Bandha Diversion Scheme is there. Sri Ram Sagar Sarai Scheme is there. So all these are the major projects which have been completed in the state of Telangana. Of course, including the Kaleshwaram project, which can be added in the first itself. Okay. Apart from that, we have the Kaleshwaram project with 160 TMC of water. Apart from that, we have another uh, ongoing major projects also, which you, you may see directly uh, in this website. There are medium irrigation projects. There are minor irrigation projects. As you have indicated, twenty-five thousand acres or more is a major project. Otherwise, it becomes medium project or a minor irrigation project. Also, so is there. 
So we have finished now the unit one, the reservoirs. So in these reservoirs, uh, basic outcomes that are expected from all of you is that you no, know, you should be ready now to estimate the life of a reservoir. Of course, you require data. Without data, I'm sure you can't. So what data is required? You should be able to ask. So estimate the life of a reservoir and estimate the capacity of a reservoir. That also you'll be able to do it as we already seen several problems relating to that. Then you should be able to understand what are the various zones of storage in a reservoir, like live storage, grass storage, dead storage, etc. Then uh, understand about the types of dams as we've been discussing different types of dams, starting from the gravity dams, concrete mark, earth dams, arch dams, buttress dams, steel dams, timber dams, their merits, demerits of various types of dams, and how to select a suitable site for a dam, and how to select a suitable dam for a given site. All these are the outcomes of this uh, first unit. And since you're in final year, I suggest you, know, you can think of some other good major uh, projects also for your major project work for your UG, for your BTEC level. Uh, good projects can be carried out. Uh, if you have interest, like one or two uh, students can join together uh, and obtain the information. And then you, you can do a project for your uh, uh, second semester submission. Like uh, reservoir operation is a very good topic uh, which can be taken up. You take any project, uh, try to see how the operation of a reservoir is taking place. For example, you take Nagarjun's project, or you take Kalishnu project, or you can, you can um, look at the reservoir operation studies for a Kalishnu project. So, what is the inflow that is coming? For how much it is designed? What are the various demands? What are the various requirements? How it has to be operated? What is the usual seasonal months in which there would be water inside the reservoir? And how this water on a 15 day basis or on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis can be diverted, can be allocated for various demands. So this is the reservoir, reservoir operation. So this is one um, good UG level project with the limited data you'll be able to do it. Another project is like um, impact on operation of a serially linked reservoir. So this is, what is this uh, serial linking of reservoir uh, in the river? Along the course of the river, if different uh, um, dams are constructed and reservoirs are formed, then it is called a serially linked reservoir. So you can see here on River Krishna, you have Almighty Dam, and then in the downstream portion, you have another major dam, Sri Salem, then you have another major dam, uh, Nagarjun Sagar, then towards the downstream ridge, you, you can see Pulichandala Dam, and then uh, uh, Prakasam Barrage. So all these are serially linked. So, what is the impact uh, on operation of any of the reservoir because they are serially? linked. The simple example I would like to quote at this point is that suppose Almaty Dam is there. Almaty Dam is not filled completely in one year say because of less rainfall and upstream needs. The Almaty Dam is not completely filled. Then what will happen? They will not allow the water to downstream. So there will be no inflow into the uh, Sri Salem Reservoir. If there is no inflow into the Sri Salem Reservoir, it, is, it will affect the power generation. It will affect uh, the, the inflow into Nagarjuna Sagar Reservoir also. So this is what the impact. So impact in operation of a reservoir for a serially linked reservoir. This is also a good study that can be done. You can take a medium year. You can take a worst year. You can take a high flood year. How uh, in all the three uh, cases, how these reservoirs are getting affected and what is the impact on the uh, irrigation? What is the impact on power generation? What is the impact on domestic water supply? And so on. The other project is like, Estimation of maximum probable flood into a reservoir. So we know when a reservoir is constructed, there will be certain flood studies, how much flood would be there. This is what is called the maximum flood. So naturally, we don't design any reservoir for maximum flood. We design a reservoir for a capacity which is required to meet that requirement in the vicinity, in the nearby places. But at, play, at times, because of uh, high floods in the upstream side, huge amount of uh, flood water joins the reservoir. Then safety of a reservoir is a biggest problem. So how to estimate this maximum probable flood uh, uh, into a reservoir. So several studies will be there. Uh, you can uh, make use of the remote sensing. You can make use of uh, GIS uh, for estimating the maximum probable flood. Then comparison of life of uh, uh, various, various reservoirs, measures for improving the life is another topic which can be taken up. So you take the several uh, reservoirs and estimate their life compare and see that how can we improve the life of reservoir. Say for example, Sri Salem, or Nagarjun Sagar Reservoir, you take 300 years is the life of reservoir. Can you make it into 325 years? 
by doing some dredging operations or by controlling the silt or by constructing any silting reservoir on the upstream side. So several measures you can think of by making a study. So application of the remote sensing, application of GS are very, very important, uh, which can be taken up. I, I suppose you have one subject also on uh, remote sensing and uh, uh, GS in the same semester. So that also can be effectively used for estimating the flood flow into the uh, 